Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a very frosty morning. Oh, yes, we have, uh, they said one to three inches of snow, and that's probably what we have out there. Yeah. And so this morning I am posting a little video, kind of a how-to. It's just me patching a wall in the house where we mm -hmm. had to cut out the sheetrock to examine plumbing. It's an easy little fix. I, I'm just going to post it, and if you're interested in that, then uh, you might enjoy this video. Yep. What you think? Oh, I think they will enjoy it. Anybody that's interested in patching a wall, because um, he knows how to do it. So it's a multi-step process, not a very difficult process, but it takes several days because you have to wait for the mud to dry in between. And, and getting the um, mud to the right consistency is important. And is is important and all of that stuff so hopefully this will help somebody out there yeah so here you go okay well I'm going to be repairing these holes in the wall so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what I do for repair there's a lot of a lot of ways to do it if it's a smaller hole I use what's called a John Wayne patch but for these bigger ones um, I'm just going to screw some boards on the back sides, put the pieces back in there, tape them. And then it's going to take like three coats because I have to tape them. And then after I tape them, uh, then I'm going to have to put a skim coat, which means I'm going to spread this out. And you can see there's texture already on there. So once I get the, uh, the tape on there, the skim coat, uh, on all of these, then the next step will be uh, after it all dries, which is at least two steps, maybe three, to get it right. Uh, then I'm going to spray it with a texture and knock it down, and you won't be able to see where where they ever were. Okay. So what I'm going to be using just scrap material, all different sizes, all different shapes. Didn't cut these, they're just pieces of drop when I built some cabinets. First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put some backing behind all these, all these pieces. And this is just what this is for. You'll see that piece is long. It's okay. I don't have time or want to... I don't have the desire to take the time to cut it. So it doesn't hurt anything being back there. So you'll see I'm just going to screw this in, staying far away from my plumbing. And uh, I'll put two screws out here just to give it a little bit of extra stability. Now, yeah, that's a nice, tight, strong piece right there. So, I'm going to choose one of these to go on the other side. Again, I like to stay away from my plumbing. So, we're going to just stick this in there. Looks a little crooked. Doesn't matter. It's okay. It's going to work just fine. And, but I'm going to keep my screws away from my plumbing. Now, you see this piece here? There's another piece of plumbing going over there. So to stay away from it, I'm going to put one over here. Keeps me away from my plumbing again. Never want a screw to go through your plumbing. Okay, so I can see it back there. So I'm going to go right over here. Mm hmm And these are not very long screws. The half inch sheetrock and the three quarter, they just barely come through. So that also helps protect my plumbing. Okay. So now that one's ready to put the piece back in. So now it's kind of like a, a little puzzle. Let's figure out which piece goes in there. Let's 
see, is that it? I think maybe this is the one. Okay, let's see if this other one's it. No, nope, that one's way off. So that's going to be the one up on top. So this is going to be the one. I'm just going to knock some of those little burrs off the back edge. And then it should go right in, no problem. Okay. Now, there we go. So, we know exactly where our pieces are because we can see the screws up here and down here and we see them there and there so we know where the where they are so we're just going to go ahead and we barely we put that head so it's barely sunk we do want it to go in we want it to go in but just barely sink it okay there we go and one more. Okay, now when we mud that, the mud will go into that crack, okay? Plus we'll have a piece of tape on there that'll help hold it. That will be just as strong as it is over here. So uh, that's what we want to do on every, every patch. Same procedure. This is ready now, ready for tape. Don't need to put any more in there. It's, a, it's good and sturdy, it's not going anywhere. So, that extra one is just because I had an extra screw. <laughs> so, now the next thing I'll tell you is anytime you buy a pre mixed mud chances are it's going to be a little dry for use. And um, you probably need to add a little water and mix it. If you do that, your tape will adhere much better than if you use a dry mix. On a dry mix, your mud can actually dry out before it has a chance to penetrate the tape. And uh, as a result, uh, it can just peel off. So I encourage you to uh, add a little water and then mix your mud good and then start taping. Well, now we're going to mix some mud. And to do that, I'm going to set the mud right up here on top of this paper that I put down to protect the carpet. And there's a little place on the bucket where you can just uh, break it and then you peel it off. Then uh, one at a time, you pull up these tabs. And if you pull them up one at a time, then uh, you can open the bucket very easily. Okay. Okay, here are the tools I use. It's just a flat pallet and the knife, what they call a knife. And um, we're going to see here. I was surprised to find out that the mud actually is fairly moist. And uh, so it's actually good enough to go ahead and take without stirring. So on a little job like this, you can just see what we're going to do here. Okay, so 
Now I'm going to put a little bit of tape on this after I smooth that out. Ah, tape's right here. And, um, piece of cake. That's done. Well, not done. I still have two more, two more coats really to put on there at least. But that shows you how easy this is. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to put that over there. And we're going to take this one. Again. Whoopsie daisy. Ah, okay. Okay, so we've got a little excess butt on there, but I'm just going to take this tool right here. It's a little wider, and we're going to knock off the excess right quick without pulling our tape. Uh, yeah. Here we go. And then in the middle, just going to knock that down. And again. Taking off all the excess. And then in the middle, stomping it down a little bit. Taking all the excess off. Okay, now, this mud is still clean. So I'm just going to take this mud. Put it back in the bucket. Wasn't any trash in it, so we're in good shape to put it back in the bucket. Now, all we can do is wait. And we're gonna wait for these to dry up. And once they get dry, then we'll go in for a second coat. <laughs> Ain't it great? Now, when I'm working and I know I'm coming right back, I would just take my flat pallet and put it on top of the mud bucket and that keeps it sealed enough that I can, uh, uh, it'll easily clean when I come back. So the mud will stay 
stay wet. There's the first line of patching. Well, good morning, it's day two. So, this is all good and dry. And uh, you can see, if I show you a close-up shot here, you can see uh, the tape. I can get it to focus there. Okay, you can see the tape still. So right now what we're gonna do is put what's called a skim coat on there. So I'll, I'll first, I'll knock off any excess in case there's a chunk of mud or something that, that's still on there that shouldn't be on there. Now, since I scrape my knives down, there's just a little bit of powder stuff on there. It's very easy to clean your knives up. Just scrape them against each other. They'll clean right up. So the edges have to be good and clean. Otherwise, it'll leave a lot of rough stuff. We don't want any rough stuff. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here goes the skim coat. Doesn't take long. So I use my little knife to get the material out of the bucket. And uh, since we didn't add any water because it's nice and moist, I'm just going to kind of mix it right here on the pallet. And that, uh, that way it goes on real smooth. Now that looks real creamy. So now I'll use my big knife like this and we're going to skim this. The purpose is to so that there won't be a hump in the middle or any you won't be able to see won't be able to see the tape uh, the bedding tape. So, what I'm going to do, and I see right there there's a bump, so I'm going to, take, going to knock that off, and that's trash, so I'll throw that out of the way. Here we go. Now, I'm going to put pressure on the outside of my knife, not on the inside of my knife. So, outside, I put the pressure, you can actually see how the knife bends. Outside, I put the pressure, you can see how the knife bends there every time and basically that's done now what I'll do in the middle is I just keep it real even okay so that's the first skim coat and that's all there is to it so we're going to do the next one okay so we're going to fill that center portion up okay then we're going to uh, put it kind of wide around the tape. You can see we're making a lot bigger spot than what the original hole was. We're spreading that mud out. Okay. Again, I put the pressure on the outside. Okay. And uh, And then on the inside, I'm going to just take it slow and easy. Okay, we've got one more to do. And right here in between, where I put a lot of pressure, I get a little bitty ridge, so I knock that off. And then we've got the last one down here. Now on this one I'm going to do it a little different because I don't have that 
I don't have room on the bottom edge to play with, so I'm just covering it, getting a good coat on there everywhere. There we go. And now it's all covered. So I'm going to take and very carefully on the bottom, again putting all the pressure on the outside. Now there's a nail there, so that can give you some problems if you have a nail or something. So uh, now if I have any trash in my mud, I put it on the I put it on the outside edge over here. Okay? If I have any trash, because I don't want to get that mixed into my good mud. So we're gonna do that again. Okay, we got that bottom done. Top done. Side done. Isn't this easy? Now, what you have to remember is I have a few years experience on this. So it might actually look easier than it is. There we go. Okay, all the skimming is done now. The good mud that doesn't have trash in it, okay, it goes back in the bucket. And then I usually have a designated spot where the trash mud goes, like this right here. That's trash. But since I don't have, I'm just going to throw it on the paper on the other side of the bucket so I don't walk in it. There you go. Now, I'll set this back on the bucket right here. I'll clean out my tools, not wash them. There's no reason to wash them. But that's going to go back on there, on my bucket, and then I'm going to clean up my tools just with each, they clean each other. So there we go. I'm going to clean them a little better than I did the other day. Okay. So the real thin, when it's real thin on there, it's very easy to scrape off. Okay, now I've got this mud. So, if I want to clean it off, it gets on the other one, right? Okay, then what I do is I take that, throw it on, on my trash spot. There we go. Got the wrong hand there. Okay, so those two are cleaned up just fine. So when I come back, it'll be dry. I can just scrape them off and it'll be ready for the third coat. Now, I'll put the third coat on there this evening. It depends on how long it takes to dry. I'll come back and check it a couple times. When it's dry, it's thinner than the first time. The first time you put a heavy coat on there, but now it's pretty thin. So what I'll do is I'll come back It'll dry maybe in three hours here in Colorado. And I'll come back and I'll put another coat over it, the third coat. And I don't even have to wait for that third coat to completely dry uh, to come back and shoot my texture. So before, uh, before tonight, like in the next, the waiting is what takes so much time. So before tonight, it will ha I'll have all the texture on there. Then we'll wait till tomorrow and we'll get a coat of paint on it. And that'll be the end. Well, good morning. This is the third and the last coat, and we're ready to shoot. So here we go. <coughs> now, you scrape all the little residue left off of your knife. Or if you want to wash it, you can. That edge is what's the primary thing. Okay. And then you want to scrape your, uh, your palette off too. You don't want any chunks going into your mud because it'll make streaks. Now, 
again, you usually have to add water to your mud. Surprisingly, this mud was mixed just about right. So I didn't have to add any water. I just mixed it up with my palette knife. Or, there we go. It's nice and smooth. Now we're going to put on the last coat. This time we're going to put it a little bit wider. So I'm going to apply it with this. This is called a skim coat. Huh? I'm talk, talking to the camera. Sorry. So, watch for any ridges uh, that might uh, develop because the old texture has some, uh, might create some ridges in there. But, it didn't. That's nice and smooth. So that was the top one. And uh, here we go for the middle one. And the third one down here, I might have to get some more mud, it's a pretty big one, but now that's ready to shoot with texture right now. Um, it's, uh, this, this one has a couple little bumps on it. skimmed now and they're ready to uh, to shoot texture on. And because it's uh, so thin on that skim coat, it will dry really quickly. So by the time I go out and get my gun and my, my uh, compressor and uh, shoot that, it will be dry enough to shoot by the time I go out there and get all that stuff. Well, here are the tools that you need. I need a little compressor of some kind so that you can create some, uh, some air pressure. You need a hose and you need a little hopper. Now this is a small hopper. Um, the big ones, I have a couple of big ones, but they're, you know, they're huge and they hold a lot of mud. And uh, so you really don't need that much on a small patch job. One thing you want to do is make sure you always clean your hopper up real well. You've got a little deal right here on the front. Um, 
that you just need to take it apart, spray it real good before you, uh, before you store it. And uh, the other thing I like on, on the hopper is, uh, is this little cutoff switch right here. That way you can easily control how much air goes through. And if you, though, you want less air sometimes so that it spits. Um, if you just let all the air blow through, um, it doesn't work very well. It's just going to act like paint. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it now. Just take me a minute. One thing I, I will do is I will, uh, even though it doesn't take much mud to do this, and I'm not going to add any water because there's plenty in this, I will mix it real well so that it's real uh, kind of fluid instead of being solid when I put it in here. We don't want it to be too gelatinous or too solid. So there you go. Well, shoot it. You can watch while I shoot it. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I am going to wash these off at this point and uh, because when I come back with my wide with my wide knife I want to have a real clean knife when I get ready to knock this texture down so I'll shoot the texture on and then I knock it down and that's what gives it this this uh, look so I also have this big wide one that's been really effective and I just use that with my hand to and I also can use it on a pole if we're shooting a real high seat high wall Okay, so now we're going to mix the mud, and uh, I just went and cleaned up my my palette and my knives. So we're going to mix some mud. It's not going to take a whole lot uh, to shoot that. Maybe a little bit more. Now this is actually much more mud than what I needed to shoot this with, but I didn't want to stop in the middle and remix. So that'll take care of us and I, whoops, just broke my little deal. Wow. Okay, so I'm just going to shake it down a little bit so we start getting Uh, getting a little mud down into this now it's going to make noise so you won't be able to hear me shoot that with uh, actually the mud was too thick so I am going to just mix up some on top of this I got this big old bucket but I'm going to mix this up get it a little thinner then it'll shoot real well
Okay, this is a lot less, but it's probably more than enough. So we will uh, we'll go ahead and shoot this. It should shoot well since it's thinner now. Okay, so at this point, it's pretty much done. All we have to do now is paint it. So I'm going to go clean up my tools, clean up everything in here except uh, the paper on the bottom, and then we'll, as soon as it dries, we'll paint it. Well, it's all dry now. So Debbie's going to come in and paint, and she doesn't have to. She has a matching color, so all she has to do is just paint uh, past where I uh, blew the texture, and it will look great. Here's my hard work and why. She painted the painted the wall for me and came in and gave that dog a bath. She's a happy girl. Yes, she is. I did. You can't miss it.